Thank you everyone for uh, being part of this afternoon's event. You know, it, it really warms the heart that, you know, despite the holiday rush and very tight schedules, you opted to be with us this afternoon. Again, we don't want to be too opportunistic. I guess Gab has presented a lot of inputs for next year. Maybe many of you are already itching to be part of the market, to uh, participate and to make sure that you're in a position to take advantage of a potential strong recovery. But again, for Ramper, and I think you know where we stand on all of these things, right? Eventually, it has to boil down to our financial plan. This is really a part of a journey that we'd like to see that is continuing, that is not simply, you know, the flavor of the month or whatever wave that there can be. We believe that investing is basically done to achieve long-term financial goals, in which case we really want to bring back real concepts of investments and make sure that we're on the same page in terms of tackling the opportunities that lie ahead. We invest because we like to have financial wellness and financial wellness isn't exactly just being secure. Financial wellness is all about freedom of choice to getting what you want, where you want it, and whenever you want it. And that has to happen not just today, but also in the future. So it's almost a quadrant there that says security, which means you can afford to cover the required expenses that you have, have extra for the things that you want, the things that would probably, you know, enliven your life and enrich the way you, you live it, your lifestyle, but be responsible enough so that you'll have it today and tomorrow. And that's the reason why we invest. It's because there has to be funds for today, which is your upkeep, and there has to be funds for tomorrow. Again, it is not just the funds to live on, it would be the fun to live for. That's very important. But what are the challenges? We're living in a VUCA world. You know, certainly, a black swan follows another. And usually, in the olden days, and, you know, I guess I'm pretty guilty of this. I mean, there was a time in the past when you see black swans, you know, really rare. Like, one comes, like, what, every 10 years. It's really so surprising that the world nowadays will probably have a black swan in close succession or even sabay pa nga, di ba? They can be together like we're, what, what we're seeing now. So in the event that we really accept the fact that we're going to be living in a book world, we'll have to know how to contend with all of these things. The volatility, the rapid and unexpected challenges that can come our way, the uncertainty, you know, the known unknowns, that's even easier because at the very least, you know what you don't know. You know, the tough one is ambiguity. Unknown, unknowns. Pinakamahirap daw, yung hindi mo alam, ang hindi mo alam. Hindi ba? Diba? Hindi mo alam yung hindi mo alam. That's even tougher. And then, obviously, because of all that, investments have become so complex. And I guess the thrust, ladies and gentlemen, friends, the thrust is to really be good at this. But hey, you and I, have different professions. You and I have different expertise, educational backgrounds, experiences. You think we can dabble into this on our own? Or do we need a partner to handhold us within our journey? Because the key to VUCA is to match it up with something that will make us in a better position to take advantage of opportunities, which means that volatility should be matched up with vision. Uncertainty should be matched up with understanding. 
ambiguity with flexibility and agility, and complexity with clarity. You know what the real challenge is? That we're not, most of us, you know, I'm not going to say all, maybe we have listeners here who are CFOs of their companies, who are accountants and investment managers. But majority of you, I am so sure, will be coming from a background or a standpoint where investments and investments management will not be your cup of tea. Now, let me just drive home the point. In corporations, you have CFOs and an entire team of, let's say, an investment department that deals with all the corporate finance functions. And even as people are so good at this, they even falter. I guess you all know the storyline that's happening to PLDT today. I mean, it's not run by really bad people. I mean, those are very intelligent guys. It's just that sometimes the business world has become so complex, it's also very difficult to follow. But how does that translate to our own individual lives? When you translate it to personal finance, it's not all that easy. People think, oh, if I'm not into corporate finance, I'm going to be fine. I'm just going to be handling my own personal finance, my own personal financial journey. Sorry, but if you're going to be doing this very responsibly, you'll have to do all of that. You'll have to follow through on, you know, things like on top of your investments, your estate planning, your insurance, risk management, retirement taxes. All of those are considerations. Obviously, we don't have the time this afternoon to discuss each and every one of that, but we do at Ramper Financials through our videos, through our events and forums, we actually cover many of these things because we know we will have to help each one of you track down and make sure that you're getting into your journey in a very responsible and accountable way. Because at the end of the day, no matter what's happening outside, we'll have to forge through with strategic investing where we're going to be focusing our situation, our investments, and our future, taking a look at our life's priorities and making sure that we achieve our financial dreams, not just for us, but for the people we love. And in so doing, anything that we do on the investment management space, we'll have to focus on goals, focused on what we want to achieve over time. And as I've said, not just for ourselves, but for the people special in our lives. On top of that, it has to be consistent. It has to be continuous. It's not just when markets are good or markets are bad. No, we'll have to make sure that that journey transcends what, whatever's happening to that environment. And because of that, it has to be forged with discipline, responsibility, and accountability. Let me tell you, for most part in personal finance, it's not what's happening outside that's really the challenge. It's what's happening inside of you. You know, I say this because again, obviously it's the Christmas season. How many of us are tempted to spend our Christmas bonuses in all the malls, in all the stuff that we'd want to buy? So if that's going to be wellness today, are you going to be so sure that your wellness tomorrow is also guaranteed? with the behavior you're showing, with the behavior that you're actually manifesting today. As the truth is, growth and risk is always a proposition. It is not mutually exclusive. We will have to forge within a strategy for growth while there is risk all around us. Always remember that we have to manage risk. And in managing risk, that doesn't mean we're not supposed to invest. That doesn't mean we're not supposed to take risks. But the important thing to realize is this, that we will have to achieve goals regardless of the situation. You cannot say, oh, because uh, the market is bad, I cannot retire in three years. You cannot say that. If you want to retire in three years, no matter what's happening to the market, you have to have a strategy to make it happen. And perspectives change with investment horizons. You know, I tell a lot of friends, you're really scared about the market? You're really getting spooked? When in doubt, zoom out. When you zoom out, you're going to be seeing a very, very different chart. You know, the chart of the market that Gab showed just within the past year, it's really scary. I mean, you look at that downtrend, right? 
But if you pull back and get the chart from the 1970s and the 1960s, then you're going to be very, you know, you're going to be seeing a very, very different picture. That the downtrend this year will not be so much of a scary thing if you look at it for a period of 40 years. So clearly, as we navigate all that, we will have to have discipline. We will have to have a real strategy. But do we have to wait? You know, a lot of people have what we call a misperception of time. They want to wait for the dust to clear, to be safe. They want the sun to be out before they start investing. They're waiting for that time when it's just right. You know, more often than not, that never happens. When the time is just right, oftentimes it is actually too late. Now, I'm not saying that the markets are fine and dandy. No, it's enough. There's enough there to be scared about. It's not yet as clear, but aren't green shoots coming up? Aren't we seeing certain developments that while the market is volatile and challenging, green sprouts are emerging? As you can, as you would have heard from Gab, there were things that can happen in early 2023 that can actually boil down to a realization that 2023 might be a better year than 2022. Can, can I ask you that? Off the chat box, just a bit of a poll here. Do you think 2023 would be better or worse than 2022? The long vote Better or worse? Is 2023 going to be better or worse? Write it down. You know, type it in the chat box. I'd want to know from you how you feel about this. Better or worse? Oh, baka may magsulat pa ng better, di ba? But you see, I like the answers that are coming out here. You know why I like the answers? Because a lot of you are saying it's going to be better, but there are still people who are not convinced. There are people who are saying it can be worse. That's what I like to see. Because if everyone is into a consensus, that's going to be too late for me as an investment professional. You know, when people are skeptical, that is still a good time to invest. That is still a good time because there are going to be opportunities. When there is a consensus and everybody says, yes, this is a great time, too late na yan. Tapos na. Nag-take advantage na yung marami. So what's the thrust? Is it looking at a crystal ball and believing somebody who's gonna say better or worse? No. Ang labanan dyan, asset allocation. Ang labanan dyan, whatever is gonna happen, you have to have the right assets within your portfolio. And we heard, we heard Gab. He said, yes, inflation can still be an issue. Interest rates can still be an issue. But there is a tapering off very clearly. Medyo bumapa na. So what should we be holding? What are the companies that will be doing well when these things happen? And that's the reason why it's always nice to have a partner like Gab and, and Unicap and Nutrate. Why? Because they're doing it on a full-time basis. It's their job. You know, let me tell you, historically, there was a time in my life that I did that. And look at what happened to me. Look at my hair. Diba? Gusto nyo bang mangyari sa inyo to? So, let us give the pressure. Let us give the option to, like, analyze and burn the midnight oil for analysts and fund managers like them. You know, sila yung magagaling dyan eh. They are equipped, they're educated, they're trained. So, anong laban natin? Asset allocation tayo. Let us make sure we're allocating the right amount of money in different asset classes. So, no matter what happens, through hell or high water, we're gonna be afloat. Now, ang tanong, lahat ba kayo may stocks na? And lahat ba kayo diversified na rin? Iyan ang problema. Hindi ba? We see a lot of people saying, oh, I have such a great long-term portfolio in stocks. 
long term kasi naipit ka na hindi ba hindi ba dapat hindi ganon dapat we will have to review what we hold take out the things that might probably be hit worse by inflation and interest rates and move some of our money to performing assets you know gab mentioned a lot of those earlier so why not let us consider changing gears and making sure that we are positioned for growth at the right particular platform moving forward. And when I say asset allocation, kasama dito syempre yung matching of what our portfolios are with our risk temperament. Ano talaga yung risk tolerance mo? You know, I cannot tell you to invest in growth, to take on risk, kung hindi pala bagay sa'yo. My brother's a doctor and he always tells me that. Rex, sige, magpaka-stress kayo sa investments nyo. At the end of the day, all of that money will go to us. Eh, di ba? Balik sa doktor. Ayaw natin yon. We'd like to be able to make an investment portfolio that will make us sleep at night. So pag ganun, kailangan bagay sa ating risk profile. Tama ba yon? That's why we will have to make this review. There is an equilibrium. There is an efficient risk frontier. So much so that a lot of people think they have to take on huge amount of risk to, to earn more money. No, there is an ample risk position that will be right for you. And how are we supposed to say that? How are we supposed to position that? Dapat sigundin po sa time horizon. What are your goals? What's your timeline? What's your age? Sorry, ah. kasama po ang age consideration dito dahil as we age, we should be able to dial down on risk. So, habang bata-bata tayo, we're supposed to be taking on a bigger position of risk. So again, if many of you are holding cash, if many of you are in fixed income instruments and you're 30 to 40 years old, you're leaving money on the table. Warren Buffett says that, you know, alam na alam nyo naman, idol natin yan. Yung lahat ng coach niyan, memorized, hindi ba? Like, people are so comfortable holding cash and cash equivalents. You shouldn't be comfortable. Why? Because you're holding an asset that will definitely depreciate in value. Is not earning much and surely will depreciate in value. Dapat po, sa panahong ganito, you should be positioning for growth. Then, if you're getting to the 60s, the 70s, that's the time you dial down. Bagayan po ang portfolio sa ating edad. So, whatever your horizon is for the type of goal that you have, there would be a risk profile that matches you. But, ang ganda ng title natin sa event na ito, di ba? Be ahead of the curve. Why are we telling people to be ahead of the curve? Because, because... When people are behind the curve, it's always too late. Now, this is a great quote coming from, again, one person who's like the pillar of the mutual fund industry. Ano sabi niya? Bull markets are born on pessimism. They grow on skepticism, they mature on optimism, and they die on euphoria. So, pag agreed na lahat na maganda na magiging takbo ng merkado, that's too late. That is when you don't see so much of value. And it's really, really enlightening that we are in a position right now to take advantage of this situation. Yes, we are in a crisis. And because we are in a crisis, we are in a sea of opportunities. We are in a sea of opportunities. So if you have cash and courage in a time of crisis, you will have a priceless situation. A priceless situation. Cash and courage at a time of crisis is priceless. It is when things are going bad that you see value. Value is more expensive than price. You will find value when many are not looking. When people are into euphoria, when they are all excited, that is actually the wrong time. That's the time to be worried. What are the must-dos in times of uncertainty and volatility? The first thing to do is to manage your emotions. Emotions always get in the way 
of good investment management. Between optimism to optimism is euphoria. And it now plunges to where we are. Despondency. Capitulation. Isn't that where the opportunity is before it goes back to optimism once again? That is key. Emotions will always get the best of us. And that's why when friends ask me, Rex, what is the organ of the body that, that actually becomes very relevant in stock, market, play, and management? Sabi ng iba, it's the mind. Because you're not supposed to use the heart. The heart is emotional. The mind is rational. Pero hindi pa ako agree doon. Yung mind, okay din yan eh. Pero sometimes you read the numbers too much, nag-overanalyze ka, analysis paralysis, then you don't move. So para sa akin, especially in a time of crisis, the organ is the stomach. Patigasan ng sikmura ito. And as I can tell you, crisis periods forge the best opportunities. Let me let me just bring you back to memory lane. So sorry, I uh, will have to say it. I've been in the market for 40 years. So ang dami ko na pong pinagdaan ng crisis. And I tell a lot of my friends, every 10 years it happens. So in a 40-year span, how many did I see? Major ones, about four to five. Four to five. Did those periods give me the greatest opportunities to jump the value of my portfolio? And the answer is yes. Ito na, 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 na tayo, 8% inflation. In October 1984, inflation was 60%. That year's average inflation was 50%. How much was PLDT then? 11 pesos. Bumaba ng 350. In less than a few years, magkano PLDT? 800 to 900 pesos. Saan mong banko kikitain yun? Today, bagsak ang PLDT because may problema sila. Pero what? It's still 1,250. It's not 3 pesos 50 cents. That was in October of 1984. Mahihirapan na tayong bumalik doon. 2008, how much was Ayala Land in the global financial crisis? 5 pesos. Today, pagsak ang Ayala Land. Almost 30 pesos pagsak yan. Kasi galing yan ng what? 40, 40 plus. Pero in 2008, it was 5 pesos. So how much is that? That's still what? Over five to six times the value. Five to six times the value. So pag binibili mo ang stock sa masamang panahon, that's where you can actually get most value. So don't panic. Look at opportunities. Keep your sights on your goals. Recognize your time horizon and risk profile. If you're looking at a 10-year horizon, don't fool yourself. You know, many of us fool ourselves. Ay, sana pala kung binenta ko lahat ng stocks ko. I should have at the very least saved like 100,000 in paper losses. Wow! Talaga? Sa tingin mo, realistically, you should have sold all your stocks and bought it back altogether? Or niloloko mo lang ang sarili mo dahil hindi mo naman talaga magagawang gano? Sometimes we think about the sana and the sayang. That is wrong. Because you know that you're going to live through the entire phase of this market. And because of that, be realistic. Part of you will often say, you're going to be part and parcel of this anyway. So again, recognize where you are in the journey and make sure your portfolio, your allocation matches your profile in terms of risk and your goals within your time horizon. Get your facts straight. Be well informed. Now, if we're going to be a client of U-Trade, we're going to be having a ticket to that, to that because they're going to be forwarding researches to us. They're going to be forwarding studies almost on a daily basis. Baka kayo hindi makapagbasa. Pero pag informed ka and you understand what's happening, guess what? The pain will be much lessened. If not, disappear. Information, the knowledge of what's going to happen, Information and the knowledge of what's about to happen eliminates pain. Ask the women who deliver babies. Anong diferensya ng regular normal delivery where they put in anesthesia, epidural, with lamas? No anesthesia, no painkiller. 
but the same mother delivers a baby. The key is that she knows what's going to happen. And when she knows what's going to happen, the pain will be much less. I'm not going to say there is no pain. I can say she can manage the pain because she knows. That's what we are in the stock market as well. If we are informed, if we understand it, then we won't panic. Then we will have the right disposition to have this moving forward. Evaluate and review your portfolio regularly. And you all know Rampbird does these reviews from time to time. We have events that make sure that all of us in unison review our portfolios. Be ready to seize opportunity. It's when times are bad, where great value surface, and you know you have to be ready for it. You will have to manage yourself. Okay, watch your cash flows and review your asset allocation parameters. Look at what asset class you're part of, the market exposure that you have, industry sector. Yan ba ay mamamayag pag in a time of inflation and high interest rate? Or are you going to be exposed with that company that you'd rather switch it to something else? And obviously, you also have to think about currency exposure. From the idol of Warren Buffett, who's our idol, ano sabi niya? Successful investing is not about man is about managing risk, not avoiding it. Successful investing is about managing risk, not avoiding it. Ito naman po, last but not least, quote naman ni Rex Mendoza. Quote ni Rex Mendoza, and always, I think, for those of you who attended many of the forums I have, I always end with this line. Always anchor everything on what truly matters. It is not simply for us. Money is a tool. It's not an end. We invest to fulfill dreams. And more often than not, those dreams include the people we love. If we do everything using the right mindset, having the right foundation, and earmarking everything for the people special in our lives, we will never have the clamor for inspiration. We will not have the clamor or wanting for motivation. We will be doing whatever it takes in a very disciplined and accountable way to make the realization of our dreams possible within all our lifetimes. Again, ito po uli si Rex Mendoza. I hope uh, we were given you a learning experience this afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat for being with us. And we look forward to having you within the U-Trade platform and a continuous set of seminars and programs in 2023. Thank you. is a major factor at ito po ang hatid nito. Siyempre, higher 